You've already worked with the label control several times. Using a label control is probably the easiest way to make a piece of text on a page accessible to your c -sharp code. In this lesson, you'll learn a little bit more about the capabilities of label controls and about the similar literal control. First, open the My Project sample file from your Sample Files folder. Open controlstest.aspx in Design View and add a label control to the page. We're now going to set the properties of the label control. Set the ID property to label test. Set the text property to test label. And set the font bold property to true. Most controls that contain text have the same text formatting properties as label controls. Next, add a literal control to the page next to the label control. The literal control looks a little strange. This is because it doesn't have any text, so a placeholder is shown instead. Label and literal controls normally display their text property on the page. Visual Studio adds placeholder text when the text property is empty, as otherwise you wouldn't be able to see the control in Design View. A label control has its text property set to Label when it is created. If you clear the text property of a label control, it will still appear in Design View with its ID property. A literal control's text property is blank when it is first created. It appears in Design View with its ID property until the text property has been set. When the text property is blank, the control won't actually display any text in the user's browser. We are now going to set the properties of the literal control. Set the ID property to literal test and set the text property to test literal. As you can see, there are a lot fewer properties for a literal control than there are for a label control. You'll see why in a moment. View the page in your browser. Note that mypage.aspx is currently the start page, so to do this you will either have to right-click on controlstest.aspx and click View in Browser, or click Set as Start Page to make controlstest.aspx the new start page. We're now going to view the source of the page. To do this, right-click in Internet Explorer and click View Source. You can see that the label has been converted into a span tag by the server. The server has converted the font bold property into inline CSS code. The literal control, however, sends only what you put into its text property to the browser. This is the reason it has so few properties. The server will never change it in any way. This is useful when you want to use c -sharp to place HTML code directly onto the page. The label control is the best choice when you simply want to display text in the user's browser. Close your browser now. Select the label test control and add a load event handler to it. You can do this in the same way as you added the click event handlers to your buttons earlier. Select the control, click the events button in the properties window, and double click in the empty box next to load. 
add the following code to the new event handler. Label test dot text equals label load event fired. View the page in your browser. And as you can see, the text property of the label was updated when the page loaded. The load events for each control on the page happen immediately after the page load event. You'd see the same effect if you put the code into the page load event handler instead. In general, it's better to use the page load event handler rather than the load event handlers of each individual control. This keeps all of the code that runs when the page loads in the same place. The person viewing your site can't interact directly with label or literal controls, so there are no other important events. Close your browser now. If you look at the other events of the label control, you'll notice the init, pre-render, and unload events. These correspond to the page init, page pre-render, and page unload events in the same way as the load event corresponds to the page load event. You'll also see data binding and disposed. Disposed happens when the control is removed from the web server's memory, which will happen after the control has been converted to HTML and sent to the user's web browser. Data binding is a special event that only happens if the control is attached to a data source, such as an SQL database. You'll learn more about binding data to controls in Lesson 11.8. It isn't just the label and literal controls that have these events. They're available on every ASP.NET control. In practice, however, it is very rare to have to use them. You won't need to use any of these events throughout the rest of this course. Remove the label and literal controls now. Try running the project again, and you'll find that it is unable to run. This is because you left the event handler code for the label control behind after you deleted it, and it no longer makes sense to ASP.NET. To continue, you'll have to remove the label test load event handler. To do this, simply open the code behind file and delete the event handler. If you now try running the project again, this time it is able to start. Close your browser and close Visual Studio. You've now completed Lesson 4.3 Use Label and Literal Controls.